Hey, what's up? I'm Brett with Premier Guitar. We're on location in Santa Barbara, California. We're at Seymour Duncan. We're going to show you how pickups are made. Check it out. This is Evan Scott, Vice President of Marketing for Seymour Duncan. Hey, Premier Guitar. And this is the man himself, hey, Seymour guitar. Duncan. Hi, guys. So, let's go see how pickups are made. All right. So, right here, I see a bunch of stuff that resembles single coil shapes. What are we looking at here? This is flat work. It's a material uh, called Forbon. It's a vulcanized fiber. Not too different from uh, the stuff that old drum cases were made of. And you have a bottom piece of flat work and a top piece of flat work, and they'll eventually be held together by six magnetic pole pieces to create the bobbin that will eventually get wire wrapped around it. And you said something earlier. You said vulcanized fiber. So, it's you know. It's a fiber material that has rubber impregnated into it. So um, it's not too dissimilar from fiberboard. And it's the same stuff that Leo Fender used when he created the first uh, Fender single-coil pickups. And what, it's what we use when we make our Fender reproduction pickups. And obviously this is specific to single-coils because with humbuckers you have a, a, a plate. Right. With humbuckers, the bobbin still serves the same function. It'll get wrapped thousands of times with magnetic wire. But with a humbucker bobbin, it's actually uh, made of injection-molded polycarbonate. So it's not hand fabricated like the single coil bobbins, and it doesn't have magnetic pole pieces, okay. but it ultimately serves the same function. And when you're talking about um, magnetic pole pieces and magnets, I think you said right over here you have a grinding machine we can take a look at? Yeah, we hand grind a chamfer on every single coil magnet, just like Leo Fender did. Let's take a look. In the old days, Leo Fender used to use this technique to make it easier to put the top piece of flat work over the magnets. And what it is, is we grind a little radius or a chamfer on every magnetic pole piece, every Alnico magnet that's used in the single coil pickup. Now, this is the way it was done in the past, and we have a strong reverence to doing things now the way they used to be done. Because if you have an old Stratocaster or a Telecaster or a Jaguar or a Jazzmaster or a P-Bass or a Jazz Bass, and the pickup goes out and you need to replace it, you want to replace it with a pickup that looks like the original in every way. And in, to really make it a, an authentic reproduction, you need to grind the chamfer on the magnets. As you can see, it's, it's labor intensive. It's done by hand, one by one. But we feel that if you want to do it right, this is the way you have to do it. It's interesting to see that so much hand work actually goes into the to this part of the process. That's true. There's not a lot of, of power-driven uh, machines in the pickup manufacturing process. We've got some grinders, there's the winding machines, some uh, electric screwdrivers, but other than that, it's pretty much a hand-built process. These are Alnico pole pieces. Uh, we have Alnico 5s in these yellow bins, and on the other side we have Alnico 2s. But one of the things you'll notice about these pole pieces is that the Alnico magnets are not magnetized. If they were magnetized, they'd all kind of stick together. But we actually buy our Alnico unmagnetized. Alnico can hold any amount of magnetism between 0% and 100%. It's easy to magnetize, but it's not very stable once it's magnetized, and it can tend to lose its magnetism over time, especially if it's exposed to certain environmental factors like shock or trauma, extreme temperature changers, or interac interactions with other magnetic fields. So to ensure that our ma Alnico magnets are charged to the right amount or Gauss strength, we buy them unmagnetized, and then we magnetize them using a magnetizer. Okay. Now, I have a quick question. Um, you said, hey, this is an Alnico 2, this is an Al Alnico 5, and obviously you're talking about the charge and how much it's holding. Um, Tell me the difference between those two, just from a basic standpoint. Alnico is an alloy that's comprised of ferrous iron mixed with three elements, aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, Alnico. Okay. And the formula of that mixture, aluminum, nickel, cobalt, is, um, is described using a number. So Alnico 2 has a different amount of cobalt in the Alnico mixture than, say, Alnico 5. They also sound different when they're in a pickup and in a guitar. The Alnico 2 gives a softer magnetic field, a little less attack on the note, and it works better with bright sounding tone woods like maple or ebony fingerboards. Alnico 5 is a little bit brighter, 
and it works better with warmer sounding woods like mahogany or rosewood. These are humbucker magnets. The magnetism is put in the magnet using this machine called, oddly enough, a magnetizer. And all you need to do to charge a magnet is put it in the magnetizer and you press a button. There's a foot switch down here and it, what it does is it, it orients the grain, the magnetic grain of the magnet in such a way that it actually puts the magnetism in the magnet. Does it hurt? We don't know if it hurts, but we also don't know if you can have children after you use the machine. No, I mean, does it hurt the magnet? Oh, no, the magnet loves it. <laughs> then, af after it's been charged, we use this little meter called a Gauss meter, and this will tell if the magnet is polarized north or south, and also how much magnetic Gauss is in the magnet. So if I take an unmagnetized magnet, you'll see it doesn't affect it at all. But once it's been magnetized and it's in a pickup, you can see now that this pickup is polarized north about 25 Gauss. That 25 Gauss would tell me that this is a fully charged Alnico 2 magnet. And uh, 25 is the number that's telling you it's Alnico 2. That's right. So if you had a 5 here, what would the reading be? About, on this meter, it would be about 50 Gauss. Okay. That's a, a pretty swanky red humbucker. What, what is it? Yeah, uh, this is a custom, custom, oh no, I'm sorry, this is a Pearly Gates Bridge, uh, and it's done in bright red, and uh, I don't know, uh, do friends let friends use bright red humbuckers? I'm I don't know, sure but you know what, I mean, I know you guys do a lot of crazy colors, but I don't think I've ever, ever actually seen a red Pearly Gates. Well, now you have. There you go. i got to buy a red guitar now. This is a process that we do with the pickup bobbins after they've been fabricated. Remember, the flat work is made of a vulcanized fiber, and the fiber can tend to warp as it's exposed to moisture. By dipping the fabricated bobbin into lacquer and then hanging them up to dry on these ultra-high-tech bent paper clips here, what it does is two things. One is it seals the four-bond fiber so that it's less likely to warp when it's exposed to moisture. But the other thing that it does is it puts a fine layer of uh, insulation around the magnets. That insulation will help prevent the magnets from rusting and corroding years later, when, especially when a player sweats a lot and that sweat tends to get inside the pickup. Uh, that sweat can cause the, the magnets to corrode and if the copper wire is wound directly to the magnets, it can actually cause the copper to break and the pickup to fail. So what this process that's going on right here is designed to keep the pickup functioning years and decades down the road when other pickups might fail, these ones will still be running strong. Some people talk about pickups like from the past, like this one sounds a certain way and it's really vibey and cool and maybe the magnet is worn down or it's this, that or the, I mean, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, a Think about a well-worn guitar and what that guitar, and by extension the pickup, has been through. Um, maybe it's been dropped. Maybe it's deflected a beer bottle being hurled at you while you're on stage, while you're playing. That trauma demagnetizes the magnet, if it's an Alnico magnet. Maybe you were in uh, playing someplace in the Midwest in the dead of winter, and you pull the guitar out of the back of the taxi cab, go inside this hot, smoky nightclub, open the case... Not only is that bad for your finish, but that extreme temperature change will demagnetize the magnets. And the worst offender is interaction with magnetic fields. You lean your guitar against the speaker cabinet, or worse, you rest it on top of the amplifier that has a big transformer in there. Those magnetic fields will interact with the, the magnet and demagnetize it slightly. And you do that night after night, year after year, you start to lose some magnetism from the, the magnets in the pickups. And that's one of the reasons that old guitars sound different than new guitars.